Hello students, this is our fourth lesson called Polygon Patterns from our first module, Rigid Transformations. A great quote by Napoleon Hill, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. A great event around this time was the birthday or birth of Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I invite you to explore more about him by clicking on the link to the On This Day website. In the first quadrant of your math journal, write down your daily learning targets. We have the 1.7, I can use rigid transformations to decide whether or not two figures are congruent. And 1.8, I can use distances between points to decide if two figures are congruent. In quadrant two of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. For part A, we explored and reviewed actually the uh, properties of an isosceles triangle when we have two sides that are equal. That means that the two uh, base angles in this case are equal, uh, which actually answers the third question, but we wanted to confirm that also through our uh, reflections and rotations. Part B, you all participated by annotating which ones on the screen were mirror images of the left hand, despite the fact that they are rotated, right? So we discovered that this one, this one, and this one were mirror images of the left hand. Here is triangle ABC. We're asked to find the midpoint and then rotate that 180 degrees and see what happens. What kind of quadrilateral is formed, uh, which we are going to label ABCD? I'm actually going to show this with my document camera. Okay, so if I'm going to draw a triangle, and if I know I have to make a midpoint of that one side, I'm going to use a measurement that's easy to find the midpoint to, right? Because I can just divide by 2. So if that's 2 inches, then I know the midpoint is 1 inch. And then I can draw the rest of the triangle. I'm not sure why I started so far up on the paper, but that's okay. All right. Let's go ahead and label. And patty paper is great to be able to see that rotation. We've reviewed this before. Uh, in a previous lesson, and so we can take that midpoint. And let's go ahead and draw over top of this triangle. We can take that midpoint and use it to rotate the patty paper. And just so you can see where these vertices end up, let's go ahead and label them on the patty paper as well. Okay, and probably a permanent marker is better than the, the Crayola washables on uh, patty paper because it tends to smear, but I'm doing okay. All right, so let's go ahead and pin down that point of rotation, and let's go ahead and see what happens when I rotate. Now remember, um, it said 180, but let's go ahead and see what happens if I just do 90. And let's go in the um, counterclockwise direction. There we go. Okay, you can use that patty paper to line up the edges. That way you can see your 90 degree turn. And wow, that's interesting. Look how it looks, right? But if we do another 90 degree to make it 180 degrees, watch what happens. Look at that. Pretty cool. It lands right on top of it. And we, so we discovered that this is a parallelogram. But how did we figure out that this was a parallelogram? And we labeled this D, right? And now A is down here. B is still there. And then uh, C is up here. So you have A, B, C, D. Um, but we discovered that because this is a rigid transformation, this side is equal to this side. And this 
line segment is equal to this line segment, and this one's shared between the three of them. And because they're the same size, that makes these parallel, which makes it a parallelogram. We also previewed a little bit about how each of these angles are congruent. Informally, we're addressing this, but in the next lesson, we'll formalize it with our academic vocabulary. Pretty cool. All right, so there's the result. Okay, so in this one we were exploring the fact that we could have different perimeters and the same area and vice versa. But it does not mean that it preserves the shape and the size. And so if we looked at these questions, we discovered that R and uh, D, for example, have the same area but different perimeters. I said that backwards. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so different areas but the same perimeter. So in the end, when we think about rigid transformations, congruent shapes have to have the same perimeter and the same area. And so we discovered what those three were as well by you all annotating the screen uh, as we did this activity. Okay, and then we had a team talk activity where you all discussed what, uh, which ovals were congruent. Uh, and it turns out that you all uh, explained that the top two are congruent despite the fact that it's rotated because it has the same uh, length or the longer direction, which is three units, and the same width, which has, the sh which is in the shorter direction, which has two units. Uh, then you also uh, argued and defended the fact that these two at the bottom are also congruent, despite the fact that they're rotated, because of their length being two and a half and their width being uh, about two uh, units. Here are your for, uh, formal notes. Take these notes in your math journal on the right side using your colors and tools to make this process meaningful to you. Remember that I also showed you that we could use highlighters and different colors to um, differentiate your text to match those transformations that you're doing in colors. So go ahead and make this meaningful to you so that you uh, can remember it and it, it it's another way of looking at this material um, that we've been reviewing over the last couple lessons. So congruence, again, is when one figure can be moved using translations, rotations, and reflections to fit exactly over the other. I showed you a quick back-to-school survival guide during our brain break. So uh, take time to explore that. And then, just to summarize, we've used patty paper, we've used grid paper, we've used applets, we've used apps like GeoGebra, uh, we used mirrors uh, and mirrors, right? And so this is just another way of exploring this concept of perimeter and area using toothpicks. It's kind of fun activity. Uh, so you notice here that there's 12 toothpicks that have a total... Uh, area of five square units, they said five square toothpicks, uh, but five square units. Uh, is there a way that you can make another polygon with only four square units with the same number of toothpicks? <laughs> Dig deeper. Then we looked at this activity in which we have the larger square A, B, C, and D where we have the midpoints, E, F, G, and H. A lot of review here, right? We see some of these smaller triangles, but it's asking what fraction of the square, A, B, C, D, is shaded, which we see one smaller square shaded within that. And so if I take a look at this and I think about my rotations and um, my other congruent shapes, I should have figured out that this triangle will fit to this one to make a square. This one will fit to this one, so that's two, three, 
4 and 5. So there's five total smaller squares, but one of them shaded. So 1 out of 5, or 20%. And then I shared a transformation trail game that you can play to review uh, your transformations uh, in a more fun way, uh, you know, as fun as math games can get. Whoop, whoop. In quadrant three of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. We extended what we learned about all of these congruent sides or segments and uh, angles and extended them to two cooldown activities that we've seen before. One being a reflection about a mirror line, in this case, AC. So we have the pre-image, which is blue, to the image, which is green. And then a rotation about the midpoint of AC, which uh, rotates uh, 180 degrees from the blue or pre-image to the image triangle. And here are the results to that. And then finally in quadrant four, you're asked to reflect on your progress in mastering today's learning standards, rate your self-confidence, and explain why you gave yourself that score. Remember that you still have the same two activities that are coming up soon. And be here, be ready, be respectful, and you will be great at Griffin. Be kind to one another and have a great day.